you're using an NWAP camera, you want to have access to the web viewer and see how to actually configure your camera, you're at the right place. We're gonna go through a deep dive into the web viewer, see how you can change the time of your camera, add users, and also enables any kind of smart features that you have on there. All right, let's get to it. All right, so you got yourself a nice Anwa camera. You plugged it in, you're using a PoE switch, everything is set up correctly, but now you need to access the web viewer to actually set up some features on it. Uh, first thing, you need to go on the Anwa website to download their WiseNet device manager. We will add a link in the description below for you to download and being able to access this camera. Now, once this is done, you create yourself a project inside this camera. So, uh, inside this software, my mistake. So you click on project, you do a new project, and let's call this one web viewer. All right, when this is done, you create a password for your project. Make sure it is a secured password. You click on okay, and then you search for your camera. Now, if your camera is on the same network as your server or PC, it will be easy to find. If it's not, you need to go on add device and add the IP address manually. So here you would enter the, the right IP range and it will do the job for you. Now, Anwa cameras by default don't have any kind of password, so you need to set one up to have access to the web viewer. What you can do is double click on the camera itself and now we already set up the camera, but it will ask you for the password you want to input. And then you enter your username. By default, again, it's admin and the password you just set up to, in, to enter the camera settings. Now, we are inside the web viewer of the camera. What are we seeing on the front page? So first off, you see here some feature that you have. So if you have a PDZ camera, you can actually move it by using the first tool on your left. Second stop, so you can remove the PDZ so it's lower, uh, it makes the screen bigger. You have the screen capture. So by clicking on the, uh, the capture right there, as you can see, if I click, it will save a picture of the camera, so what it sees right now. Second one, the recording part, will do a screen recording of what you're seeing. So if I click on there, well, the record starts, and as soon as I stop it, it will save the video on my desktop or server uh, that I have. You can actually choose whether you want an AVI file or a zip file for your video by selecting it, again, next to the record button. If you have any kind of alarm input, this is where you would also uh, select how many you have. And same thing if you have two-way audio. So the camera we have right now have the two-way audio. It is not set up, but you would be able to use a microphone and a speaker to communicate through the camera to the outside and being able to speak to any kind of intruder out there. Um, then you have the status of your camera. So you can access the profile. This is something we'll see because it, it's a, a nice feature for the end user. So when you're doing an installation, you can create different kind of profiles for users and give them access to things they want to change by themselves. Again, we see uh, the status of the camera itself. If you go here, you have the video setup. This is another way to access it. You can also click on the cogwheel and you will have additional uh, features you can change on there. Right now we're going to leave it by default, we don't have any problem here. And some aspect ratio full screen setup that you have next to that button. Alright, so we're going to close that. Again, you close by clicking again on the right button. And we're going to access the cogwheel on top, which gives you access to all the setup on the web viewer. First off, under basic, we have the video profile. So this is where you would select which kind of video compression you would like to use for your camera. By default, you always have the MGPEG, H.264 and H.265. 
Now we have mobile here, but it was actually manually added. So you can delete it and create it by yourself later on. And that is an, a nice thing about this, this camera is that you can add as many profiles as you want. So if you want to have, uh, let's say a mobile, uh, H265 plus, I think for, for Wise, uh, WiseNet VN1 cameras, they all actually call that uh, Wise Stream, which is their compression tool. Well, you can go ahead and create as much as you like. If you go underneath, you have the resolution of your camera. Uh, you can select it uh, for this one. We have a 16-9 ratio. You can lower it to lower the bit rate. You select the frame rate, maximum bit rate. If you go in the advanced settings, well, as you can see, many, many details here. So you can really build your profile as you need to make sure that it fits well the setup you have. So if you want to lower any kind of storage that you would need, I suggest lowering the, the frame rate, the resolution, and anything like that. Second stop, still under basic. We're gonna do it under the user. So as I mentioned before, you can create a lot of users. And this allows you to, again, have access to different setup of the camera. So ideally you create one for the technician, one for the end user, and this way everybody's happy. So create again your own password, make sure it's a secured password, and you're secured, it's good. Next stop, date and time. This is really important, many people forget to do that step, but Date and, date and time enables you to, when you give an alt text, to have the right time and hour on the camera when you need to provide the footage to, let's say, uh, uh, any kind of police officer. So this way, he has the right information when he's reviewing that footage. So right now, for us, we are in Eastern Time Canada, and it is daylight saving time. So no need to change anything here. You also have access to the date if you want to change it manually. And remember that everything, every time you're done, you need to click on apply. If you don't, it will not save any kind of changes you, you tried to do. Next, IP and port. You shouldn't change anything here. Uh, as I mentioned before, you downloaded the WiseNest device manager. So on there, you are already selected the right IP, right port. So it's more of a way to review it but you can change it later on if you move or something like that. Next up, it's PDZ. Now we're not dealing with a PDZ camera, but here it would be any kind of a, uh, AI you need to set up on your PDZ. This is where you would actually uh, select. So as you can see here, it's already selected on person and vehicle. It will not work here, but just, just a quick mention of what's underneath there. Now, video and audio. First off, video setup. Uh, normally, again, we went in here before, but you might, may need to rotate your video. So flip mirror, this is where it happens, this is where you do it, and again, you click apply to make sure it saves uh, when you go on to the next step. Audio setup, again, this camera does have a speaker and a microphone uh, port, so you can um, set it up right there, so underneath that profile. If you go next under camera setup, well here, it's kind of a, what, what we saw earlier when we were on the front page, so having changing uh, the, the white balance, backlight, the exposure, IR, day and night, all that kind of stuff, and you can also uh, change some modes, so if you want to remove your IR because the camera is always, you don't want to have any kind of IR on your camera, you would just go under IR and turn it off. So look, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, everything, you click, you select, and you change the profile. Uh, well, what I mean by that is that it will save to your profile any kind of changes you do. So Again, it's, it's really helpful to have this uh, customization inside of your web viewer. Smart codec, I mentioned it before. Uh, right now, the quality is at medium. So this is using the wide stream from Anwa. Focus setup, if you need to change the focus because we're dealing with a very focal motorized lens, 
that is, if I remember right, uh, four millimeters to nine millimeters. Uh, just a quick, uh, <laughs> quick specification right now, but uh, this is where you would also change it up to have maybe more a wide view or a telemetric view, which is more zoomed in on your uh, area. All right, uh, Y stream mentioned it. It's the quality of the video for compression. So you're going to save more space on your storage if you use the wide stream uh, setup. Here we were at Y stream one, but you also have access to Y stream three. That is pretty good. I I'm not really familiar with the big difference between Y stream three and Y stream regular, but my guess is, and from what I've read, it's similar to any kind of H.265 plus you see. So any kind of ultra H.265, every manufacturer has its own compression tool nowadays. So I'm pretty sure it does a great job of saving space for you. Again, if I select, I click on apply, it saves, and I don't need to go back later on. If we look at network, I'm not going to go into too much specific in there, but you can go on yourself for any kind of changes you need to do. We're going to jump straight into events. So this is where you would set up your rules for any kind of events and alarm you want to set up on your camera. Now, if we click on storage, which is another important tool, is to see how much storage you have on your camera because Anwa have actually solid edge cameras that have storage inside the camera built itself. So it's a nice way to replace an NVR and facilitate any kind of installation. So if you're using a solid edge, this is where you would see any kind of storage on the camera itself. And you can create partition inside your SSD. Right now, this model has one terabyte SSD. So you could create multiple ones to save any kind of data in there. Next up, the alarm. So again, this is where you would see your alarm input and output. You can create a time schedule for your camera inside, again, events. And network disconnection and QTT. I'm going to skip that part and go straight into the analytics, the most fun part of this camera. So Anwa, I, I love the way they do uh, uh, this part because it, it's really visual. You, you see what's happening in real time and it, it's kind of a little game to, to play. So if we go into motion detection and we enable motion detection, so apply the change, you will see on the right part of your screen, the level of detection. That means that if I move my hand here, you see huge spikes on the screen. That means that there was a lot of movement and you can actually set up the threshold to make sure uh, that it doesn't capture every type of motion. So let's say you're, you have your camera installed uh, outside uh, in front of a road. So there was a lot of cars. It creates a little bit of movement on your screen. So you can see the threshold. now. I'm an expressive guy. So there's a lot of movement right now on the camera. It's always sticking at about 50 level. So I can raise my threshold either uh, by, let's see, up to 35, more than that. And as you can see now, the line is becoming more grayed out. That means that it's not detecting any kind of movement that is underneath 70 uh, of level of detection. And all the little spikes that are orange is when I go above this 70. So moving my hand in front of the camera, you're going to see a huge spike appearing in front of the screen. Is it doing it? Yep, here it is. Okay, so it's hard to get to 100, but you understand it. You really need to get in the face of the camera for it to happen. You can also create areas for the motion detection. As I mentioned before, if you're fa facing a road, a lot of cars going by. So by creating area, you kind of limit all that. So pretty much like when you're doing a trip wire kind of thing, you select every corner of the area. And now any kind of motion that happened in that zone will be detected. You can also uh, act, uh, change the minimum duration that means the duration of the movement. So if it just goes by really quick, it will not detect the movement. If you, there's a lot of movement constant, it will detect it here. 
now we're gonna do it's the same thing for excluding the area now in the include area it means in this area when there is movement you will receive a notification and if you want to exclude an area this is where you would create this area now what we do apply the changes and it, it, it works for any kind of detection, so any kind of smart feature on the camera itself. So if we're doing the tempering detection, well, again, same thing. Level of detection, you have your graphic on the side. So if I put my hand in front of the camera, you would see that the tempering goes, uh, <laughs> well, almost to 100 again. So. It's a nice visual aid when you're doing the installation to really understand what happens in front of the camera. So this is one thing that I really like about the Enwa cameras. So doing all this setup in their web viewer. Uh, defocus detection works the same way. So when the camera is losing focus, you select your detection level and it will send you a notification if it hits this orange spike. Now, why is AI? It's different so this camera doesn't have AI per se but it will open a new page for you to understand how to set up your AI so if you want to do a human detection you need to understand what you need to see to be able to detect a human and it works the same way for vehicle so please make sure you read this before doing any kind of AI setup we're gonna go back inside the web viewer uh, audio detection, we mentioned it before. This camera does have a speaker and microphone, so it does record any kind of audio that comes in. So you can, again, enable audio detection and select the level of detection you would like it to detect. Sound classification, this is, again, really helpful because not every sound is means there's something happening, right? So you can actually select categories of sound that will uh, send you a notification. So here, the example that they are giving are screams, gunshot, explosions, and cra uh, crashing glass. So when a glass breaks, uh, which typically means something's happening, right? So having these kinds of categories helps you filter out any kind of sound that comes from the outside. Now, if we go under system, it's all the information about your camera. And if we go under upgrade and restart, this might be helpful to you if you need to restart your camera. So do a factory default to maybe uh, give it to another installer or something like that. So important to know where you can do that. It's under system, upgrade, restart. Then under that, you have the logs. So anyone, anytime someone connected to the camera, you can have access the log and you will see who connected. Again, when I mentioned the users and profile, this is where, again, it can be helpful because you go into the log and you see, okay, the, it's the end user that did the modification, it's not the technician, and so on. You can kind of monitor everything that is happening with the camera. For the open platform, well, this is when you want to add plugins to the camera, so with any kind of license for the AI. Right now, we don't have any, but yeah, that kind of give us a good tour of what you can do inside the web viewer of Anwa. Again, uh, <laughs> I see it like a little game when you see the, I'm trying to raise them up all to 100. Uh, a, a really nice tool, really easy to navigate, really intuitive. Uh, this is a great user experience for the installer and also for the end user because with the visual aid and the helping, for example, with the classification for the sound alert, it, it's, it's instinctive. You, you know what you're getting when you're selecting these tools. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you liked the video, leave us a comment below, like and subscribe, and we'll see each other on the next one.